Hello. Hello, you lovely people. I'm not. And, uh, I am happy. I'm a pretty happy guy right now. <sighs> to the contrary, a few hours ago, I was quite a sad guy. I was almost crying. I was not crying. I've had difficulty shedding tears lately, actually. Although I did shed them once while taking a walk. That was a beautiful moment. I was crying about something, something very dear and special to me. But I will not name it. Come no closer. Curiosity. Now, the truth is, you know, I've been thinking about things. Life, man. It's, it's interesting because joy is what makes us truly be. Yet in sadness and deprecation, in sadness and deprecation, you can find so much value. It's incredibly fascinating to really see and understand and know what emotions are and what emotions mean and so on. To know how emotions resonate with you, to understand the fabric of our mind and why they are so poignant in their release and their existence. That's a fascinating thought. And you can tell I've been more happy because, as well, <laughs> because uh, maybe five videos, six videos ago, I was very down. More like 10. I was very down as an individual. I was not too happy with myself, you know. And, uh,. I believe it, it matters to find improvement, but those experiences can be gained for a very valuable reason. You know, it can be important to be angry, be angered, or be sad, or be distraught sometimes, so that you learn from it, or just so that it happens. It's a balance, you know. Now, of course, just being happy all the time leads to a pretty good life, you know. But Everyone, like, no one is really like that. Some people are mostly like that. But everyone has challenges. Everyone has difficulties that they overcome. That's another point to consider. You know, when in the realm of being distraught is the mental health challenges that a lot of people face on a daily basis. And what saddens me is that some of those people, they are never really all that happy, you know. They stay sad. They stay distraught. They stay depressed. For them, it isn't a, a life lesson as much as it is a reality of living, reality. So, I find that really sad, you know, it's really a sad thing. Now, uh, An interesting point I've just thought of to consider, though, is what if halluc what if uh, or 
reality is a hallucinated reality. As in, what if, like, because it doesn't make a difference to anyone, really, for the most part. Because you see with your eyes, everything feels real. But the hallucinated is not in a physical state. So that's something interesting to consider. You know, when someone with schizophrenia has a visual hallucination, nobody else sees it. But it happens to them, and sometimes it can be very vivid. Same with bipolar, although that's much less frequent. And uh, it's fascinating because, well, I have a friend called Alec who has drawn his hallucinations before. And they all look so hazy and kind of in intense and vivid and interesting and unique. But I don't know if he's straight up drawn them as much as been inspired by them. But sometimes it's crazy how just insane the detail that is shown can be. It's mind-boggling. It's mind-blowing, you know? I'm in love with that. I really am. Now, the truth is, within the mental fabric of our existence, let me take it back. Within the mental fabric of our existence, it's perhaps that exactly. What if, like, we're all sleeping in a coma, you know, and we're just living this reality out? What if everything is hallucinated through our minds, and our mind is our sole actual physical dimension, so to speak. And that everything else is bred from the mind. So in that sense, people could see different things, but color association leads you to believe that you see the same colors, which is presumably true. There could be slight differences between people, but it is presumably the truth. It's interesting to think about um, what that could mean, though. Because, well, there are some people out there, quite a few people out there, that believe that our reality is the sole reality there's been, and that our universe is the sole universe, and so on. And the uh, second one would be excessively more well accepted because of the argument for galaxies. Which is a very real argument. Meaning that they would live in other galaxies. So, it's an interesting point to consider. That maybe there are other universes beyond our own. Sorry, I'm getting into the whole planet philosophical way too deep for life arguments again, without any actual studies back in it, you know, so. But it comes off as kind of superficial while I, have an, I attempt to make it more deep. And in doing so, I bring about, you know, my ritualistic points, my habitual points, which have some kind of deeper meaning, but rely on the grandiosity of um, the superstitions of life. I've noticed that. <laughs> How if you can't explain something at all, it's so much hard, it's so much harder to actually put a voice upon it. Like if you can't explain something, how can you justify it, you know? 
with facts, with logic, with a logical basis. Because I'd say, like, I, I said that, like, because my friend brought it up one time. I remember that, which is fascinating. I love my friends, you know. The hallucinated reality concept, but I, I can't explain, I can't elaborate on that other than to say that there is something inherently fascinating about it, but I can't elaborate on it. I haven't done whatever minimal studies you could do upon that. Maybe in hundreds of years, or maybe very soon, when we learn about the brain more. And that's another thing. I want to talk about this. You know? This is my videos, but soon it deviates into more normal shit when I start producing more. What if heaven is real? That's one thing I've been thinking about. And, you know, what's interesting about the whole heaven point is that <sighs> so many people think of that as uh, a safety net for their feelings, for their emotions, for their mentality. Um, you know, like a way to find comfort within yourself and to just env envelop yourself to completely bury yourself within the comfort. But, uh, you know, it's really interesting to really think about it as an actual solidified space. Because I've made that point before, which is that if we live within a computerized basis in any way, then we are accounted for. And that's really interesting. And I believe if we do, you know, I've already said that, because that is inescapable if you think about the world as a simulation. That is inescapable as an argument. If the world is a simulation, then we are within a computerized basis. And therefore, what happens when you die? Well, you get out of the computer, or maybe you continue existing with them. This would imply... Because that's the only way heaven exists. Either that, either that... Or it's something to do with, like, you know, more like soul. Like, um, I was thinking. Because you think, you think from a non-pragmatic point of view and it could exist through a spiritual lens. Which could have involvement. But ultimately, everything has to be solidified. There's a reason that, you know, this bed feels like this is bad, you know? There's a reason. There's a reason that I can touch my face and actually feel my face and I can touch my eyes and feel my eyes. It's that simple. It's because we're made to feel and we're made to think and we're made to understand and so on. But since your perception relies on a reality, it can be hard to accept these concepts as fact. Not what I just said, but the computerized basis, that is, the simulation. Or computers are incredibly advanced compared to what they were. They impress us quite a bit. Most of us, I'm sure. Oh, I pressed the power button and within five seconds my computer is on. There's... Computers, SSDs, that are actually like that. Maybe the brain is more impressive than any computer out there by far, but computers have gotten fairly impressive to our standards incredibly. But can a computer accommodate free thought? You get what I mean? Sorry, it's kind of, I'm kind of having stoner thoughts, even though I haven't smoked. But can a computer accommodate free thought? Can a computer accommodate a sentient soul? That's an interesting thought to have. 
And how does a sentient soul get accommodated within a reality? Because there's that logical explanation behind everything, except for dinosaurs. I kind of looked that up. Dinosaurs is not really explained too well how they just got out of existence. There's because there's multiple theories, which makes sense. It's been a long time, but there's multiple theories. Not one is actually solidified as our truth. There's the meteorite truth, which is the most sought after, the most heard one. But it isn't solidified as our actual truth. And that's fascinating. That shows that within every logical conclusion can be a fault. Which is beyond beautiful, if you ask me. Because what is truly proven? We weren't there, you know? That's kind of the whole point. We didn't exist when dinosaurs existed. If we did, we were a different race and it was a different time. And there is nothing we can do about that. Yet we still try to predict based on bones. There are very fragments of the past, you know. Then there is history that explains everything in grand detail for the most part. Which is, again, it's all very cool. It's, it's incredible. A simulation that's just left on for 4.5 billion, 7.8 billion, 15 billion years. What does it even run on at that point? <laughs> that's funny. But it's kind of the truth. The other explanation is that, you know, it just came out of nowhere and then that we grew into something and then we developed over time electricity a long time electricity we grew out of the habit of wanting to kill ourselves or you know kill our species i mean because for some time we were like tortured there were like torture chambers and shit that's back in the medieval times or however you'd call it and then we kind of grew some empathy along the way. Totally normal, you know. We made it. We made it past some pretty unbelievable stuff that should have stopped us. And that goes as early as, like, to me, prior World War II. Where there's this one story that I remember <laughs> from grade school. Or at middle, no, at high school... It would have been high school. Where apparently the fight was almost lost against uh, the opposite side. The allies almost lost. And what got their victory done, what, what made them win, was like one submarine against five. It was that them. I have some remembering wrong, but I seem to remember that. And uh, it's interesting because that was like such a close thing and it ended up like, what if things were different? You know, what if things had happened differently? We'd be living in a different world because every action has consequences when they're meaningful when they matter to the grand scale. Massive consequences and rewards. So. Everything creates a new timeline. That's another point. And then there's the question of, well, if we're not simulated at all, and we're simply here, because to me there's a reason I'm biased in speaking this way. I've had experiences dawn upon me. I'll leave it at that. Very real experiences. That to me felt real. That proved that there is a living behind, beyond our comprehension. Very spiritual yet very menacing. Very frightening. Very bloody. In the sense that I could have died. 
but I didn't see blood or anything, but. What a fucking walled year and a half, eh? And now I'm sitting here and I'm just spitting out this shit and I'm realizing like there's no real basis behind any of it. And that bugs me. Because what if my experiences stay to myself forever? Huh? <laughs> what if I never actually... Like, even as a producer, if I could just produce the right notes, I could create the right album. Maybe I could make something beautiful happen. There's always that chance. Then maybe I could get my word out. But it would just end up being in the van of what Elon saw. Every second that passes is a potential life being born that then creates everything. You know, such as the Jesus story, if it is applicable. Such as the not Adam and Eve, yeah. So. Anyways. I'm going to go brothers and sisters. I love you. And uh, remember, one day, these one day these videos won't be philosophical anymore. But first, I need to get a job, and then I need to loosen up on life. Because right now I'm in super deep thought all the time. And it's kind of like overwhelming. You know? And it's goodbye.